Absolutely everything has an on-off switch, right? Well, virtually everything, except notably a Raspberry Pi. And in this video, I'm going to add one. Out of the box, the Raspberry Pi just powers up as soon as that USB cable is plugged in. And to safely shut down, like most computers, there's an on-screen procedure to be followed, which closes down any background tasks that are still operational. And when that flashing green LED has finally gone out, it's safe to unplug the computer. For desktop use, that's all perfectly fine. But for the Raspberry Pi Zero in my robot, I don't want it always to be connected to a screen for that shutdown procedure, or constantly reconnecting the USB just to power it up again. And the answer is this neat little shim from Pi Maroni, which fits on the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. In the corner is the tiny switch, and that micro USB connector will be used instead of the usual one to connect to the power pack. And without further ado, let's walk through the fitting. Adding the switch means I can keep the power supply plugged in all the time, powering down the Pi Zero and switching it back on again with the touch of a button. And having leveled off the shim with a couple of bits of cardboard, I can start to solder. With a bit of practice, my soldering is improving and assisted by liquid flux and a brand new soldering tip, I'm managing to make a pretty neat job of it, which is important as the motor control hat is gonna sit on those same pins. I'm not sure how many of the pins actually need to be soldered, and some are not required for the operation of the switch, but I'm doing them all anyway. It looks like I can also add an external button, which will be useful, as that button on the corner is pretty fiddly. I'll come to that later on in the video. And for now, this part of the job is just about done, and I can remove those temporary spacers. And with the switch shim perfectly level, refit the motor control unit. As its name suggests, the on-off shim doesn't just help turning the Raspberry Pi on, but will shut it down safely too. But for this, we need to install a little bit of code, which we can get from the product page on the Pi Moroni website. It's that line of code in black, which we will need to type into the terminal on the Raspberry Pi. And after a couple of efforts, I finally got it right and installed the software. And I've now got a fully operational on-off switch, one quick press of which will boot the computer up and holding it down for three seconds will shut it down safely without the need for the screen. Just wait for those final three flashes of the red LED and then the green one will go out. Now I don't think I've got particularly large thumbs and you can see how fiddly that little switch is. So I'm going to take advantage of the option and add a bigger button which I also got from Pi Maroni and I'm going to make my own little circuit using a bit of Vera board which is pre-drilled for standard components with copper strip connectors, very much like a pegboard. And at the same time, add a power switch for the motors. So here's my circuit, or rather circuits. On the right is my momentary push button with wires going to the on-off shim. And on the left, the toggle switch for the battery power supply to the robot's motors, which is currently unswitched and on all the time the batteries are installed in the box. Leaving the black wire directly connected for now, I'm going to route the red one via the switch so we can turn the current on and off. But while I'm here, I want to add a visual indicator with an LED that lights when the current is on. And for that, I'm going to need to route the black cable on my board too, where it will provide the negative for a mini circuit comprising a yellow LED and a protective resistor that will only be completed when the switch is in the on position. So that's the theory. So let's get down to practice, starting by soldering the terminals of the switch to the copper strips on the underside of the board, and each wire to the shim will be soldered to the corresponding strip, and the other end to the shim itself, just pushing the wire into the little hole and soldering to the copper terminal. Here I have to admit that I messed up the video of the other side of the board, so in Blue Peter spirit I'm going to leap forward to the here's one I completed earlier, and here's the board mounted on the robot chassis by a couple of sticky pads, which is good because they conform to the unevenness of the soldering, but the board is a bit spongy, so I'm going to retrofit a mounting block. Starting with strips of black plastic gift card. For the edges, cut to the depth and the length of the circuit board. Then, with the inside strip already glued into place, I'm mixing up some quick drying epoxy glue, which I'm going to carefully feed into the cavity underneath the circuit board between the sticky fixers, which when it's dry, will form a solid base. Just taking my time, building it up slowly, and making sure I don't drizzle any of those strings 
over the Raspberry Pi or the rest of the robot. Then when it's fully dry, I can remove any of my masking and glue the remaining strip edges in place, finishing up with the short strip along the front of the board. And then just finally, touching up the white edges with a bit of black acrylic paint. Now, when we come to use KV, the robot guinea pig, we don't have to mess around reinserting batteries or reconnecting the power pack for the Raspberry Pi, just booting it up with the simple touch of a button, thanks to the Pi Moroni on-off shim. Then we can run the control program using SSH, which I covered in another video. And finally, isolating the power pack and shutting down the Raspberry Pi, all without connecting a single cable. If you'd like to see more of our robot project, check out some of the other videos in the playlist. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for future updates.